Welcome to the Kind of Nerdy Girls podcast. Fandom. Fun. Funny. Kind of Nerdy Girls podcast. Whoa, prepare yourself for what may be the most badass kind of nerdy girl we've ever had on the show. I had a chance to talk to Jess Phoenix about her new show coming to Discovery, which is all about Atlantis. I'm kind of obsessed with with Atlantis. So we had an amazing conversation. She shared inspiration for women and little girls who love science. Uh, And she also pointed out that she has not dubbed herself the female Indiana Jones, but that is something that other people have called her. Fortunately, other people thought that was appropriate, so I will defer to their judgment. <laughs> uh, well, well, we got we to gotta know, uh, with a title like uh, The Female Indiana Jones, were you influenced by the movies, or where did your sense for the adventure and exploration that you've been on come from? You know, I think it comes from books more than the movies. I was really just a, you know, a bookworm as a kid and well, and an athlete, which was a weird combo, but (laughs) I, uh, I read constantly. So I read, you know, Jack London and, um, you know, I read Treasure Island, Robert Louis Stevenson and, 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 you know, basically Jules Byrne was kind of my nighttime companion when I was little (laughs) saying like, what's out there in the world to see and discover. And then of course, when I got older and saw the Indiana Jones movies, I was like, oh, there's no way that real science is like that. Um, and, I, and I can say now that after being a field scientist for, for, gosh, more than a decade, that, yeah, I mean, we don't punch Nazis that often, but <laughs> we do go to really dangerous places. I mean, we have run-ins with uh, some of the, the most dangerous folks on the planet, and we have to try to keep our team safe. And it's weird because everyone thinks scientists are just nerds, bookworm nerds who stay in a lab all the time. But... In actuality, field science happens everywhere all the time. We have so many brilliant scientists all around the world, and a lot of us are women. So uh, we need to update our notion of of who Indiana Jones is. (laughs) Yes, I agree. Uh, So Misadventure, My Wild Explorations in Science, Lava, and Life is out now. And you've got Hunting Atlantis, which is coming to Discovery. Um, is that sort of like one of those uh, th- those dream uh, explorations for you? There's so many uh, myths and, and legends with Atlantis that uh, what was this adventure like? Well, you know, I I grew up reading Greek mythology, a lot of it. I just thought it was cool. And I always have been of the mindset that Atlantis isn't real, you know, that it was just a story that Plato told. And that is a pretty popular notion. So when I got this, the message about this series and they wanted a scientist who understood geologic disasters, I said, well, okay, why? And turns out that my co-host, Stell, has a new hypothesis that we've been looking, if Atlantis is real, that we were looking in the wrong era, and it's actually older than what everybody had assumed before. And so we started looking at, you know, looking at archaeology that that dates back uh, really far. We're talking about 7,000 years old. And we went all over the Mediterranean, the Adriatic, uh, the Black Sea, the Aegean Sea, so to Croatia, Bulgaria, Turkey, Greece, Italy, like we went all over looking at these old civilizations. And my work there was just to just to basically say, is there a catastrophe that happened around the time that that Atlantis may have existed if it was real? So Stell does the archaeology. Uh, he, he defers to experts from like NYU and Cambridge about what they're working on. And then, you know, I get to do the geology and I consult with local geologists about, hey, was there evidence of a big volcanic eruption or a sinkhole or a tsunami, something that could obliterate a huge advanced civilization in 24 hours, because that's what Plato said happened. So, you know, without spoiling it, I want to tell everybody that, yeah, you know, as a serious scientist, I was like, eh, I don't know. But in making the show, I got to see so many amazing things that uh, people should check out, because there is amazing history that we still haven't uncovered, and we're in the process of learning about all over the place. So you've tackled Atlantis, and we're going to be able to uh, see that soon on Discovery. Uh, What else? Is there something else on your your bucket list that you want to 
explore and, and, and see if you can reveal the secrets? Well, yes, because, um, of course, I, I'm also a history nerd, and that came back to life thanks to uh, thanks to the show. But um, as far as volcanoes go, there is a volcano in, uh, in the southern Atlantic Ocean. It's only two degrees north of the Antarctic Circle, uh, and it's like about 1,000 miles from any other big land masses. Uh, it's called Saunders Island, and it has a volcano on it with a lava lake at the summit, that no one's ever seen, no human, not not ancient people, not modern people. We only know it's there because of satellites. So I'm currently trying to organize like an Avengers of Science sort of expedition oh. down to this remote volcano because it's there's glaciers on the sides of it, and getting up to it is going to be. I mean, it's going to put Temple of Doom to shame. I'll put it that way. <laughs> we need this, Jess. We need you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. So, yeah, if, if you know anybody who's super wealthy who's listening, uh, you know, tell them to send a check our way and they'll get some fantastic research and expedition uh, in return. <laughs> Every wealthy listener I know right now, we're calling on you. This is this is your calling to uh, assist Jess in her next mission. Uh, you mentioned Amazing. the <laughs> you mentioned the uh, the Avengers of Science. Is it ever when you're watching? You know, movies like that, like, you know, seeing Tony Stark and Bruce Banner have this, this banter with their fancy screens and stuff. I mean, is that anything close to real of what goes on in, in your life? <laughs> I mean, kind of. We, we have to have amazing senses of humor to do work in the field because, you know, if you're in a situation and something very dangerous can happen at any given moment, whether it's because of local humans or whether it's because, you know, a volcano uh, is erupting and you're in a hazard zone, you've got to be able to, to connect well with your team because it's never just one person alone. There's always a team involved and you've got to get along with them. You've got to be able to use humor to get through the tough moments. So there's plenty of banter. Uh, it, it just usually isn't scripted. <laughs> <laughs> Um, going back to what you uh, said earlier about sort of changing the the perception of of what scientists are, what nerds are, and in particular what uh, women are doing in science. Um, do you have any advice for, we have a, a lot of young girls that listen to us. I actually have a, a group called the Kind of Nerdy Kids, and it's all about um, especially inspiring the young girls, because, you know, when I was growing up, there wasn't a female Indiana Jones. Uh, do you have any words of wisdom <laughs> or, or ways that young girls can start if they're interested in, in growing up to be like you? <laughs> uh, my, my number one piece of advice, and actually, fortunately, it applies to everyone, but especially to young women, uh, stay curious. And Ask questions about how the world works, why mountains are where they are, you know, how the oceans formed. I mean, that sort of curiosity that we all share when we're young, before we have bills in real life, you know, that presses down on us. That curiosity is what drives all great scientific discoveries. So tell people what you're interested in. If you love butterflies, tell somebody. If you love volcanoes, whenever you meet people, tell them that because you never know. Who's going to say, oh, uh, my aunt's cousin is a volcanologist. I'm sure she would be happy to talk to you about her work. Uh, and that, that opens more doors than you would imagine. So keep the curiosity burning and uh, advertise what you're interested in because you never know who could open a door for you and totally change the course of your life. Thank you so much, Jess. It's uh, been so inspiring to talk with you. The new book, Misadventure, My Wild Explorations in Science, Lava, and Life is out. And Hunting Atlantis is coming in July, right, to Discovery? Yes. So, yeah, stay tuned, as they say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we will be standing by. Thank you, Jess, so much. Have a great morning. Thanks, KJ. Thanks so much for listening. Want to remind you that PopCon is getting closer and my new TV show, Paranormal Crossroad, will be live. That's right, live 
paranormal TV happening in front of you. You can get your tickets now at popcon.us. July 9th is the date. We will be at PopCon all three days, July 9th through the 11th. But if you want to see our show live, make sure you get your tickets as they are limited to the Paranormal Crossroad show live with me, Kitsy Duncan, and spirit medium Tiffany Rice. Find out more at PopCon US, get your tickets for the show, and also get tickets for the special Messages from Spirit gallery reading with Tiffany following the live show. We'll see you at PopCon July 9th through the 11th. The Kind of Nerdy Girls are proud to be a part of the Just What I Needed network, and we certainly hope we were just what you needed. To support the show, you can get yourself some merch and show off that you are kind of nerdy. Go to kindofnerdygirls.com and click on the Kind of Nerdy shop. And while you're there, you can also support the show by getting access to behind-the-scenes footage, videos of our podcast, and never-before-heard episodes from our our classic kind of nerdy vault. Just become a patron at kindofnerdygirls.com.